Happy Sabbath. All right, let's begin with the word of silent prayer. Amen. Okay. So for Sabbath school, we'll be going over these the two servants or the two the two um groups that um that are shown in, in God's word. It's a simple thing we should be looking at, and it's the prepared way for what Swinnon will go over after. And all right, we'll start at the top of the notes from COO 152, paragraph one. Says the Pharisee and the what? Publican. Represent two great classes into which those those who come to worship God are divided. So the two classes are shown in the parable of the Pharisee and and the Amen. So and she also tells us that Peter shows both both of them. And these are the, Peter shows both the Pharisee. Sorry. One second. And these two classes are arrayed on either side. One on the side of Christ and one on the side of Satan. And the Pharisee is on the side of Satan. The publican is on the side of Christ it says their two representatives are found in the first two children that were born into the world. And who are those two? Cain and Abel. So the Pharisaical religion was shown from the very beginning. And Cain is shown as Pharisaical re religion and Abel is showing one who sees themselves as a sinner and um, asks for the, for the merits of Christ, for the works of Christ, for, for his atoning blood. Cain thought himself righteous, and, and he came, came to God with a thank offering only. He made no confession of sin and acknowledged no need of mercy. So Abel did the opposite. Abel made a confession of sin and acknowledged the need of mercy. But Abel came, came, came with, with, with the blood that, that pointed to the Lamb of God. He came, as, he came as a sinner confessing himself lost. His, his only hope was the unmerited love of God. The Lord had respect to his offering, but, but to Cain and, and his, um, and, and his offering, he had not respect. Okay, so we see these two classes when we look at the parable of the ten virgins. Next paragraph, GC 88, 393, paragraph 1, says the parable of the ten virgins of Matthew 25 also illustrates the experience of the Adventist people. So the Adventist people is shown in Matthew 25, and something we went, went over numerous times. It says in Matthew 24, in in Answer to the question of his, as you can, um, someone read this quote, please. Matthew 24 answers the question of his disciples concerning 
Mm. Mine was coming. Not the end of the world. Cars had pointed out some of the most important events in the history of the world and of the, and of the churches and of the church from its first to the second advent, namely the destruction of Jerusalem, the great tribulation of the church, under the pagan and papal persecution, the darkening of the sun and the moon, and the falling of the star. After this, he spoke to his parents in his, in his, in his kingdom and related the parable describing the two classes of servants who look for the parent. Chapter 25 opens with the words, Then tell the kingdom of heaven the right hand of the ten virgins. Here is brought to view the church, the living in the last days, the same that is pointed out in the story of chapter 27. Amen. So, okay, go, go ahead, sorry. All right, so in the previous chapter, you have the two servants. You have the wise and faithful servant and the one that says, The Lord delayeth his coming. And they are paralleled with Matthew 25, the wise and the foolish virgins. Amen? Okay. Next paragraph, COL 4, 6, paragraph 3. Can I read this as well, please? Amen. So we know Matthew 25, verse 6, we looked at this last Sabbath. Matthew 25, verse 6 is here. When when, when the call goes forth, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And she tells us in CL 412 that the great and final test comes at the what? The close of human probation. So this point is a time period when this fire comes to see what, what sort of work in which we have built. And this is, this is a time when, when you have oil or you do not have oil because the fire comes just to manifest whose servant you are. And this is saying that showing with Cain and Abel. They came, they came into the altar and now, and now, um, and now it was shown if fire was to fall down for Cain or, or Abel and fire only came down for Abel's sacrifice. So this is the time period where where it shows if you have oil or not. But that oil, you, you have to have before that trial comes. Amen? All right. Okay. And she says that the oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. But it's not saying that you have, you have to gather the oil from before the door shuts. Because when the Samuelites plagues fall, the only thing that keeps keeps the saints is the Holy Spirit. But it's not saying in this, in this type, that you have the full outpouring of the Holy Spirit from the very beginning. But you do have the Holy Spirit with you, because if you had not had the Holy Spirit, it is only by your might and your power only, and not and not not by the Spirit of, of Christ. Amen? Okay, so you do have oil, you do have the Holy Spirit. And she tells us that. As we'll, we'll read it as we go along. But... Galatians chapter 3, verse 3 says, Are ye so what? Foolish. So now, this is bringing right back to the foolish virgins. 
Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made um, perfect by the flesh? So this oil that you receive, you, you, you come up in the beginning in the spirit. Once you accept Christ and you continue on, um, you'll be sealed in that spirit. But if you fall and fail and sin, you're not continuing in that spirit. And now this is what, what he is saying to them here. That they have begun in the spirit, but but they had not been steadfast in keeping um, the light in which the Lord has sent. Next paragraph, Reverend Herald, um, July 20th, 1897, paragraph 7. Can someone read this, please? God is dishonored when we do not receive the communications which he sends us. Thus we refuse the golden oil which he would pour into our souls. Okay, so the oil is what then? Based upon this quote. Communications. Amen. The oil, these communications. So before this final test comes, the Lord is communicating to us, and we have to receive, receive that light. And if you receive that light, you're receiving the one who has sent that light, which is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, because faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing comes from word of, word of God. And if the oil is his word, you're, you, you, you're, you're receiving the faith as you receive that word. So you have an increase of faith as you have this increase of knowledge. That is, that is what is supposed to happen. But the foolish virgins do not always go on that onward, upward march. Go ahead, Quentin. Mm -hmm. Those that have faith in Christ and those that trust in their own works. Amen. So, um, Amen. Okay. Um, finish that quote, please, Althea. When the call shall oh, no. come, yeah, it's Wesley. When the call shall come, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Those who have not received the holy oil, who have not cherished the grace of Christ in their hearts, will find like the foolish virgins that they are not ready to meet the Lord, their Lord. They have not in themselves the power to obtain the oil, and their lives are wrecked. But if God's Spirit, Holy Spirit, is asked for, if we plead as did Moses, show me thy glory, the love of God will be shed abroad in our hearts. Through the golden pipe, the golden oil will be communicated to us, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. By receiving the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness, God's children shine as light in the world. Amen. So, if we receive the light, we shall reflect that light as well. Okay. And she tells us that when that call came, those, those who had not received the oil, it is seen that they have not received the oil because the test comes to see if there's any real faith in the promises of God. Next paragraph, COL 283, paragraph 3. It says, there are only two what? Classes in the world today, and only two classes will be recognized in the judgment. Those who violate God's law and those who obey it. Christ gives, gives, gives the test by which to prove our loyalty or disloyalty. If he love me, he says, keep my commandments. He that hath my, my, my commandments and and keepeth them, he, he it is that loveth me. So to show forth your love for Christ, this is, um, you, you have to keep his commands. These are all plain, simple truths in which, in which, we, are, in which we already know. So the Lord at the close is going to send forth a light, and this light is a commandment. And when he sends forth that commandment, there, it, it will be seen if there's any real faith in the promises of God. Because, amen, this light comes to see who is really of, of Christ or of Satan. Next paragraph, we read this earlier this week. So read this, please. The two classes of servants from Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, February 19th, 1857.
Why do I again on the season? They see the sword coming and raise their one voice. They foresee the evil shall hop and hide themselves. To proclaim the fulfillment fulfillment of the prophecy. Another class rises up in opposition to my Lord. Class of Elizabeth. Delayeth his coming. Where is the promise? Amen. So, hmm? speak up. In the disappointment, when Christ didn't come, many of the people they said that because Christ my Lord, delay is coming. Amen. So, the one, um, one class gives me. Which is the wise, they see the sword and they hide themselves, but they hide themselves in Christ. And the other class is a group of religionists. And these are the two classes that are shown in Matthew 24 between Cain and Abel, between the Pharisee and the publican, between the wise and the foolish virgins. And a religionist is a bigot to any religious persuasion. And a bigot is one who is obstinately and blindly attached to some creed, opinion, practice, or ritual. Or the next next book, it says, Ill, Ill, liberal towards the opinions of others. So, so they raise up and lift up their own thoughts above above the thoughts of others and they hold hold to that one thought that one thought only and this is what the pharisees did the pharisees the pharisees held held to the lambs the 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 lambs and the rams and said that this is the way to salvation this is the way to salvation only go ahead yes amen okay let's go to da 309 paragraph two and now we'll see where this where this mindset will lead if men do not change. So read this next paragraph, please. And the basis hypocrisy. They thought themselves the greatest religionists of the world, but their so called orthodox orthodoxy led them to crucify the Lord glory. Amen. So the religionists bring about the darkest periods in in Earth's history. And the twelve sixty is called the what? The dark ages. Yeah. So if you have this this spirit, you will align yourself with who? With the papacy, with the whore. Amen. And and they'll and, and then you lift up Sunday. Continuing on. Under the heading Tutors and Governors. You will read Galatians chapter four, verse one to five. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were what? Children. Okay, so now the Bible has to explain what what it means about children. Even so, we when when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world. But but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the receive the adoptions of sons. So Paul goes on later on in this chapter and shows you the same two classes of, of people, the same two class, the same two um, servants. He picks up with the same thing, being under the law. 
Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do, do, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one, one by a bondman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory for these for these are the two excuse me covenants thank you the one from mount sinai which gender to bondage which is agar for this agar is mount sinai in arabia and in answer to jerusalem which now is and is in bondage with her children but jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all so he shows that you have these two sons is one by a bondmaid and one by the free woman. They're showing these two classes. And we know that this was this was Ishmael and this Isaac. Ishmael was was brought um was brought forth by the bondwoman, and Isaac was brought forth by the free woman. It's showing these two, and it's showing the the old and the new covenants. So now let's go to LBG it's from G.I. But G. I. Butler, excuse me, fifty one paragraph three. Can someone read this quote? And he's commenting upon Galatians chapter 4, um, verse 2, and telling us what it means to be under the law. We read in Matthew 8, 9 of a man under authority, having soldiers under him. Authority was over him, and he was in authority over the soldiers. And each was to obey. Not that he was under the condemnation of authority or the soldiers under his condemnation. Under, in both cases, is from the same word. Yes. In Romans 13, 1, we read, The powers that be are ordained of God. Of, is yeah. From Hupo, i.e., under the authority of God. In Galatians 4, 2, we read that the, the child living under Hupo tutors and governors, i.e., they have authority over the child, not that it is under the con their condemnation. Other illustrations might be given of the same sense. Indeed, the very nature of the expression itself signifies this, under the law, simply meaning the law being above or having authority over the persons who are under it. This is the primary, simplest meaning of this term. And a less strong reason can be adduced. To the contrary, we should always give the expression this give the expression this signification. Where reasons can where reason can be given to show that the sense requires to understand it to mean the condemnation of the law, then we will so understand it and not before. But evidently in the text we are now examining, it means simply that the Jews were shut up under the authority of that typical remedial system with its barriers, walls of separation, etc. So the system of faith should be revealed under which they could find salvation. Amen. Alright. So we are here as this child under the Tutors and governors. And Paul also tells us, he says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. This is speaking about when we're um have the spirit of adoption, basically, when we're as Christ at the end. And this is when he is the fullness of fullness of time. When he sends forth his son to take us from under the law. And now we are this man, this man in, in Christ Jesus. But we all we all we also know that this is just a type pointing forward to the time when, when we're truly free from sin. Because even in this time, we're not fully free, free.
free from from sin as that this is only a type of this this um birth but so he's telling us here that when we're under this law under the tutors and governors that it is not meaning under the condemnation of the law because if we're under the condemnation of the law that that means that we are sinners and we're practicing we're knowingly practicing open sin as as, as Cain or the Pharisee or the, or the foolish. And they, and they were never his sons. They are never of, of Christ. They were never of Christ's fold. Because, because when the man of sin fell, um, yeah, when, when he fell, Christ said that he has lost none of his own. But to, to show that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and James were of his own because they ended up receiving his spirit. But Judas, the man of sin, did not receive of his spirit. So we're gonna look at go look at 1 Corinthians 13, where Paul speaks of being a child as well. Because when we're this child, we're under the tutors and governors, and a child only knows in part. A child does not understand things in full. It's what Paul speaks of and speaks of and shows us. Verse 9 says, For we know in part, and we what? Prophesy, Prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So when that which is perfect, Christ, Christ, Christ is that perfect, when he is come, then the part is done away. So as a child, you understand, in part. And then when this perfect comes, when the fullness comes, you understand in full amen all right verse 11 go ahead I don't understand which laws he's speaking of here as well. I'm not I'm not fully sure. I'm I'm not sure how to answer that question, but go ahead, Quentin. I think that if we follow on to the Christ, then it's just the death of the cross or resurrection again, um, and it's just a purification. But for those that hold on to it and they don't advance, it's death, the the condemnation, because light came came into the world and they didn't receive it, so they didn't see that, so they can't get the resurrection. When I have to think about those, those those things, but when you look at verse four, it says, "Wherefore, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God." Yes, I understand, but I don't think this law in which he's speaking of here in verse four would be speaking about the law of of the I don't think it's speaking about the law the 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 10 um commandments that you mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to look at this point. 
Hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at this point at a later date, but later time. Cause I, I have some questions as well, but oh, uh, yeah, I'll just I'll leave that for now. All right, so Paul tells us that when you're a child, you know in part, but then when when um. When, when you come a man, you put away the childish things. Verse twelve says, "For now, for now we see, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face, face to face. Now I know in part, but then, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide the faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. So when you're in this child, see." Darkly, but when you're made pure, at the end, um, see face, see Christ face to face. This is, and this is alluding to his second coming. All right. So now we're gonna close on this. The start of looking at the in part. TM forty five paragraph one. Let's read this paragraph. We want the church militant, please. Loudly, please. Amen. So, God's church is which church? What does the quote say? It's church militant. It says he has a church, but it is the church militant, not the church triumphant. So God's church is the church militant because, because Christ knows that we're all, we have all come under the bondage of sin. Amen. We all have defects. And... And um, and she brings also um, the parable of the wheat, wheat and the tears, to show that the tears are these defects which are in the church. It says, has God no living church? He has, so he does have a living church, and his living church is the church militant, not the church triumphant. And and what shows the church militant is that it has defective members, and it's shown for each man as well. Each man have defects within them. But until until it's shown, it is not um, put put upon you as sin. It's not written as sin. Same thing with um, with men men in the past. So let's go to five MR eighty four paragraph three. And one last point: as long as long as the tears are in this church, the Lord cannot show forth that which that which He really wants wants to show so you're only seen in part you're seen through a glass darkly next paragraph 5 mr 84 paragraph 3 can someone read that please God rested and was refreshed, satisfied with his work of creation. 
Then the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And now, men, observant of the Lord's day of rest, will again cause joy among the angels of heaven. The time in which, the time in which we live, is a time when the church militant will realize the, the oppressive power of persecution, because they keep the Sabbath of creation, which God has sanctified and blessed. Amen. So, she shows that in the Sun Law Crisis, which is a parallel to this as well, that there'll be false, yeah, religionists. So we have these bigots who will lift up the head, the papal head. Go ahead, Swindon. Okay. Okay, amen. Because, because we we because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord, therefore we are falling under the, um, amen. Death will will come upon all if we do not repent. And it's speaking about it's not speaking about the first death so much. Speaking more so about the second death because that is the more dreadful death. That is the death we should all flee from because many of us in here maybe, as as she says food for worms we may end up dying but um for faithful we're not we, we will not receive of the second death so in 5 of mark 84 paragraph 3 she shows that the church and the sun law crisis is still this church militant and and the and the church shall feel the oppressive power of persecution because they keep the sabbath of of creation which god has sanctified and blessed Next paragraph, I just have this quote here to show that the Sabbath is what draws, draws this line of demarcation. And you must see this line, this, this separating line, even in the type. And I do believe the Lord will give us light upon the Sabbath, even in this type as well. Because as we looked at previously, the Protestants will rise up greatly at the sign. And the Protestants will lift up Sunday, so therefore... We, if we're faithful, have to lift up the Sabbath, the true, the true rest day. All right. So now let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah shows us both the church militant and the church triumphant, just as um, Peter shows us the publican and the Pharisee shows us these two groups. But within the, the church of Christ, you have the church militant and the church triumphant. You have these two churches. Review and Herald, December 22nd, 1896, paragraph 3. Can someone read this quote, please? Amen. So, so Isaiah in Isaiah chapters one to five is showing the church what the church militant. Amen. But in Isaiah six, he's showing what now the church triumphant. So, Isaiah here, you have Isaiah in his experience and his walk is showing this in chapters one to five is showing church militant because it says says he had not known this. So he had he had only known in what. In part, so so this is this is he was he was as a child, but then when now Christ showed him the fullness of his sin and showing him as as um he he is he's now showing the church triumphant when he humbles himself and falls falls on the rock, and I have Isaiah I'm putting Isaiah six here to show um just the church let's put C T for church triumphant. To show the the life in which the church should have at the end. Amen. Yes, it's the whole the whole experience when you you fall as one dead and you're raised up at the end. Amen. And the newness of life is the three days in the grave. Jump to paragraph five. It says in the previous chapter, Isaiah had 
had what? Pronounced a woe upon, upon the people who had separated, separated themselves from God. But, in, but then in Isaiah 6, he sees himself under the same, the same, um, amen. He sees himself as, as, uh, as those men as well. Because, because he says that, that he is a man of unclean lips and he dwells in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Before, he just said that he is in the midst of a people of unclean lips until the Lord showed it himself. He saw himself as the, as the same, as the same way. All right. 3SM, 19 paragraph 3. Can someone read this paragraph, please? Amen. So, in the previous weeks, we also saw that it shall stone you, it shall bring up all these accusations and mistakes and errors, and these are the same thunderbolts in which um, Satan will throw. But he is using men to throw, throw, throw these bolts or these stones at the church militant, because they see the errors and the defects in the church, because that is what it means to be of the church militant. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, next paragraph, Signs of the Times, May 21st, 1902, paragraph 8. Can I read it for this as well, please? Amen. So having this interest and sympathy now will help us as we go along. We must have this now in part so that so that we can receive the, the seal, which is which is this charity, this true love for God. And if you have a true love for God, you have a true love for man as well. Can I read for the next one as well, please? MS-1B, 1874, paragraph 22. God's workers today constitute the link of connection between former workers, the church's history, and the present workers. The tide of spiritual life is to flow through conscious channels in the history of the past. God's light has been flowing down for ages upon the church militant, and God has and is continuing to impart light, precious light, and all who receive light are made All the excellencies that have come through the relief of the truth are to be treated with the uttermost respect. They shall not deteriorate in our keeping, but improved by the imperfections that have been developed in others. Speak up. Because the influence of their failings is seen and its unholy history revealed, uh, revealed. the workers of today and all their habits and all and in all their sentiments and aspirations are to be most pure as they see the failure of others. They are to be constantly learning and improving in the path of purity and the best methods of working because they know better the ways and works of God and will see the necessity of holy character to be true witnesses for God. They will be living epistles known and read of all men. Amen. <coughs> So the church now is made the depositories of sacred precious light to diffuse to others. And, and this work shall go on from the beginning all the way down 
down to the end. All right. CE 76, paragraph 3. Can I read it for this also, please? The life of Christ was a life charged with a divine message of love, of the love of God. And he longed instantly, intensely, uh, intensely to impart this love to others in rich measure. Compassion beamed from his countenance, and his conduct was characterized by grace, humility, truth, and love. Every member of his church militant must manifest the same qualities if he would join the church triumphant. The love of Christ is so broad, so full of glory, that in comparison to it, everything that men esteem as great dwindles to insignificance. When we obtain a view of it, we exclaim, Oh, the depth of the riches of the love that God bestowed upon men in the gift of his only begotten Son. Amen. So, if you want to be part of of this group here, you have to have the same, the same, um, the same things before, before this time comes, because she says that you must, um, show forth the same, excuse me, show, you must show forth the same, um, amen, if he would join the church triumphant. So we must have the same, the same love and charity and all these things. But that only comes once you heed to the word of God and you must live up to all, all the light that you have in part because this fire will come and show if you actually really lived up to all that the Lord has shown you previously. And we'll read the next one. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 12, 12, 13 and 14. Now, if. Amen. Build, build on this, build on this foundation, foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest for, for the day shall, shall, shall d d declare it because, because it, it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So, this will only try that which was already there. So, so this night, night time here will be night, night to those only who have not received the oil back here. But th this time will be light if you receive the oil, oil from before. So, um, it's very plain, plain things to show, show these two groups, and showing that even in the Church of Christ. You have these two. It's first militant. When they have have these errors, errors, but then triumphant. When all these errors are put away from out of the church, and this is a work that is that's a constant work, day by day. And today we're we're choosing if we're gonna stay under the the, the banner of Christ or the banner of Satan. That being said, shall we close with a word of prayer? More so, Father in heaven, Lord, we give thanks for this day and for, for all that you have shown, O Lord. Please, Father, forgive us for our sins. Help us have oil, O Lord, so that, so that when the final test comes, that, that we might have light to see, see and, um, see and to know, know your voice, O Lord. Please, Father, help us in this day to, um, to. To have our minds minds fixed on your word, so that so that all that we say and do might show forth your son, O Lord. And we ask these things in Christ's name. We pray. Amen.